Let's build a blog app as an example React and Redux toolkit project. And our blog project will support all CRUD operations when we create, read, update, and delete blog posts. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to apply all CRUD operations in Redux Toolkit when we build a blog project with React. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Please note this tutorial is not for absolute beginners in React. It is for those that already know React and are beginners with Redux and Redux Toolkit. If you are a React beginner, you should complete the React JS for Beginners full course on my channel, or one like it, at a minimum before attempting this Redux series. And we're going to use React Router version 6 today. If you're not familiar with React Router, I'll provide a link to my React Router version 6 tutorial in the description too. We're going to jump right in where we left off in part three of this Redux Toolkit series, and we created an example bulletin board project in React with Redux Toolkit. And today, we're going to refactor this single page application into a multi-page blog, and you can download the starter code that I'm starting with from the sources in the description. Okay, we're here at the app.js, and you can see we've just got this single page application. We're pulling in an add post form component and a post list component component and they all display at the same time. If you run the code right now, the form is on top and then the post list is just underneath. So it's really a bulletin board single page application. We're going to change this into a multi-page blog and we're going to start by adding a single page that we can view just one post at a time and view the full page and not an excerpt, but the entire post, I should say, the full post. So what we want to do is first go into the post slice that's in our features directory. And here we're going to add a selector to select a post by ID. We've already created some selectors at the bottom, so let's go see those. So down here at the bottom of the post slice, we have select all posts, get post status, and get posts error. And you can see they're very simple. They receive the state, and then they either return all the posts, the status, or the error that we have in the initial state where we set that up and that's way up above if I scroll back up here's the initial state with post status and error but now we want to just get one single post and we'll do that with the post ID so I'm going to grab that quickly and paste it in and we'll review so right underneath I'm pasting in this new selector and you can see select post by ID it receives not only the state but a post ID. And then once again, we're referring to the posts and yes, it's state.posts.posts here, but we are finding then the post by the post ID where they match. Okay, we're exporting the selector as well. So I'm going to save this page and now still in the posts directory here that's in the features directory, which is in the source directory. So here we are at posts, I'm going to create a new component. So I'm going to hit the new icon up there and we'll call this single post page.js. Now this is going to let us view the full post and it's going to look a lot like our posts excerpt component that we have here, but notice we're only viewing the first 100 characters right now and we're passing in the post. This is going to get the post in a different way using that selector. So let's go back to the single page post. I'm going to paste this in and we can review. So I will scroll to the top. Notice we're importing in use selector and then we're importing in the selector that we just created. We also have the post author, time ago, and reaction buttons related to the post as well because that will let us view those. Now I've made a comment here because we haven't retrieved the post ID yet. We're going to do that soon as we implement React Router and we'll get it from a parameter. But right now, if we had the post, then we're going to go ahead, or at least the post ID, if we had the post ID, then we're going to go ahead and use our selector and pass in the post ID. Now this selector is different because it accepts the two parameters, state and the post ID. So notice we're not just passing in our selector by name. We actually need to have an anonymous function here that passes in the state 
and then we can pass in the state as well as the post ID to the selector here. After this, if the post is not found, we're going to return a section element with an H2 that simply says post not found. However, if it is found, then we're going to return the post and it looks much like the post excerpt except it's not limited to the first 100 characters. It will be the full post. With that complete, I'll save this file and now I'm going to press control and the back tick and we'll also scroll down here and pull up our package.json so we can see our dependencies. And we see in our dependencies right here that we do not currently have React Router and we're going to need that for a multi-page blog. So we need to type in npm i and then react-router-dom. Press enter. It should install quickly and then we'll verify that it's listed in our dependencies. All right, the install is already complete and we now have React Router DOM 6.3, as of the making of this tutorial, listed in our dependencies. So I will go ahead and close out of the terminal and close out of the package JSON. Now let's go to the index.js and implement the React Router. Now, I do have a specific tutorial for React Router version 6, so if you're not familiar with that, now would be a good time to pause or just go over to my channel and find that. I'll probably link to it in the description below as well. But the purpose is I'm not going to just be teaching React Router here. You'll see how it's implemented, but I'm not going to slow down just to go over the basics of React Router. So here we're going to import in several things for React Router. We've got browser router as router, so we renamed that. Then we've got routes and a singular route as well. Now notice in the JSX, we've got React strict mode, which you could review, uh, remove. You don't have to have strict mode if you don't want to. Then we've got the provider and then just the app. So we're going to replace just the app here with everything else. The provider can surround what we're going to do with the router because we want to provide the store to the entire application. So I'll just paste the rest of this in and we can see the changes. When I save, it gets formatted correctly. So we start with router and that is browser router and we named it router here. Then we have routes and then we have a single route. Now this path is important because the slash and the asterisk will allow for nested routes when we get to our app.js. And then for the element attribute, we just pass in the app component. And so that's all we need to do in index. So let's save this and move to the app.js file. And really before we make any changes in the app.js file, I'm going to scroll up, collapse the post directory just so we can see all of this better. And inside of the source directory, I'm going to create a new directory and make a components directory. So this is going to house the components that are more for layout and not associated with posts or users specifically. So inside of this components directory, I'm going to create a new component named layout.js. This component is rather simple and this strategy was introduced with React Router version 6, we're creating an outlet layout here. So if we had something like a header or a footer, we would also probably include it here in our layout file. Right now we don't, we may in the future, but we're using this outlet and this outlet represents all of the children. So when we put the layout component into our application, it can then represent all of these children underneath. So we'll save here. And now if we were to have a header or a footer or anything, of course, they would always appear with all of the children. Okay, now let's go to the app.js file and apply the routing from React Router. So we have two imports at the top already. We're going to add a few more to that. So I'll paste those in. Now we're importing our single post page. We're also importing our layout. And then we're importing routes and the singular route from React Router DOM. Now let's look at the JSX that we're returning. And of course, we already abstracted this main with the class name app to our layout component. So we see that right here as well. So we don't need that repeating here inside this. What I'm going to do is just highlight all of that and paste in the new routing, save, and I'll review this with you. So we have our routes. And what we're defining here is the root route, essentially the path with the slash. And then we pass in that layout component that we created. So it is the parent to everything else here. Now inside of this path, we can have an index element. And so we note that here with the route, index, 
and the element, and we have post list. So that's really what we want to come up as the home page is our post list component. And of course, anything else that was applied in the layout will also be part of that. And then we have another route, and that is post. So this would be slash post, and the index for that route, so whatever.com slash post slash, and then the add post form. So we could add a new post, if we went to the slash post route. And then if we had after the slash post, if we had another slash, we could have the post ID parameter and that would go to the single post page and pull up whatever post ID parameter was in the URL. So here we have two nested routes that are inside of our home route. One is the index and one is the post route. And then the post route has its own index and then of course a route that will support parameters for each individual post. Okay, with the routing covered, let's go back to our single post page that we started and we need to allow that page to actually get that post ID. So how we're going to do that now that we have React Router is to go ahead and import the use params hook from React Router DOM. And then once we have that imported, we can apply it here inside of the component. I'm going to select this and I'm going to select the use selector here that we are using and paste over both because there's one change I want to go over with that use selector. I'm going to press control B to hide the file tree for now. But here we're using the use params hook to get the post ID. So it's going to pull that value from the URL parameter. And then this use selector, the change I made is wrapping the post ID in number. So we can actually get that accurate comparison back in the post slice when we were finding the post by ID, because otherwise the string and number values would not actually have a strict equals. And there's one more change I want to make before we test out our changes. Let's go to that post excerpt component that is much like our single post page. And here we need to add a new import from React Router. We're importing in link from React Router DOM. And then we're going to change this line where we have the post.body.substring. We're going to limit that substring just a little more to 75 characters and we applied the class name of excerpt. Now I'm providing some new CSS in the index CSS and you can download that from the resources if you want to or you can just apply your own. I'm not going over the CSS today. And finally, let's go ahead and add to the post credit class here, this paragraph we have. We'll go ahead and use the link that we imported from React Router DOM. Now this creates an anchor tag when the HTML is rendered, but notice it's linking to the post path and then the post.id so we can view the individual posts. So we're just adding a link to each excerpt that will allow us to navigate to the full post. And now let's save our changes and then press control back tick and let's test out the application. See if we have any errors or if everything is working as it should. So we typed npm start and it should start up the server. And here we're going to have a new tab and our application should start on the right very shortly. We'll probably tweak a little bit of this because it's right up against the left side. And everything else looks as it should though. We've got posts and each individual post as we come down has its own view post link. Let's see if that's working as well. Yes, we can go to the individual post page as well. Now we would have to currently use the back button to go back, but we will add a header very soon. Let's go back to VS Code. I'll close the terminal, but I'll just leave the app running. And now inside of the components directory, let's add that header component. So it's just header.js. I'll paste this in and we can quickly look. We've got link from React Router again because we have a couple of navigation links, but this should provide a header that we can always see no matter what page we navigate to, which will help us either go back to the home page, which will have the list of post excerpts, or go to the post a new post page, essentially a new blog post. And of course, from the home page, we could click on view post that would take us to the individual post page. And that's where we're eventually going to be able to either edit or delete the post as well. So let's save this. And now we need to go to the post list component. I believe, no, we need to go to the layout component. And here at the top, we'll just import the header. So we'll import 
header and it's right in the same directory. So there it is. And now besides the outlet, we're going to actually put the header above the main element. So let's say header and save. And what we are missing, as you see the red here, is a fragment which would help us out. So let's put in the JSX fragment. And then after this last element, we'll put the closing fragment, save, and it should format correctly. That looks more like I want it to. Now, since we didn't stop the app, let's go ahead and see what changes we can see when I drag this over. Well, this looks better. It doesn't look great, but let's see what it looks like if we drag it to a full page now. And that looks much more like I was expecting. Now, I think we could remove this posts here because it's obvious that these are posts and each one says view post. But overall, this looks good. We could maybe refactor or add some more CSS for a smaller screen. But right now, let's just drag it back over here and let's go to that post list page and see if we can remove, I'll press control B, see if we can remove that H2 that says posts. So yes, that looks good. And we'll save that. And now if we also go to the posts excerpt once again, those were H3s. We can now change those to H2s. That header hierarchy is important and we just removed the H2. So there we go. And it did change the size a little bit. We could change our CSS if we want to for that. But now we have an H1 at the top of the page and an H2 here for each additional post. Okay, let's go back to VS Code now. I'll drag this back to the full screen. And once we're in the full screen, I'll press Control B to see the file tree again. And we want to go back to the single post page component. And inside the single post page component, we want to add a edit button so we can edit each post. So what we want to do first, and I've got an extra line here at the top I can remove, but we want to import something else from React Router DOM, and that's going to be link from React Router DOM. And now as we scroll down, essentially in the same spot we put the view post for the excerpt, we can put the edit post here in our single post page. So now we can save that with the link edit. And now, just like we have an add post form page, we're going to create another component here that is going to be edit post form.js. And I'll paste the code in and then we'll review. It's really kind of a hybrid between the single post page, because this is just for one post, and the add post form as well. So it's got a little bit of the ingredients of both, but really nothing new. So we're importing in use state because we're still going to use the use state hook for the local state of the form. Then we've got use dispatch and use selector that we're bringing in from React Redux. We've got our selectors, select post by ID, and then we're going to bring in an update post that we haven't created yet, but we will be doing that next with the post slice because that is our update in our CRUD. We've got create, read, now we're going to update. And we can, of course, see the create and read already in the post slice that were created in the previous tutorial. Okay, use params, but then I said nothing new. Here is the one new hook that you haven't seen yet from React Router. It's use navigate. We're also bringing that in. And then we're bringing in select all users from our user slice, not our post slice. So now, as we review, we're getting the params because we need that post ID just like we do with the single post page. We're also creating navigate so we can use it later. Then we're using the selector to select post by ID and we're also using a selector to get all of the users. Then we have our state and this state is much like you've seen before when we added a new post and we also have a request status ready to go as we would dispatch that update. And of course we are bringing in the use dispatch hook here so we put the dispatch here. Now this post with the return when the post is not found has to be after all of the hooks. It cannot be before or you will get an error from React. And as I scroll down, now we have the handlers for when the form input changes, title, content, and author. We have a can save variable and I'll press control B so we can see all of that. And this is just like we have in the add new post form as well. So we're making sure there is title content and user ID. All of those must be true and the request status must be idle. And then when we click to save the post and I'll press alt Z so the code wraps so you can see all of it. This is a little different now just because 
we have more information in the post. When the post is first created, we're pulling in information from our fake API, that JSON placeholder API. And then when we do that and we add a new post to our state, we're adding in the reactions and the date because they didn't previously exist at the API. So it's just something we had to do to adapt. But now that we're updating the post, we need to include all of the information we have except for the date because we'll set a new date. And then we use unwrap, which of course throws an error and lets us go to the catch block if an error happens. And that is something we covered in the previous tutorial as well. But it essentially lets that promise either reject or create an error. And then it represents that here and allows us to use try catch logic. Here's the navigate we created, which is something new. So after we edit this post, we're going to go back to the individual post page and view the post that has the ID. Now, as we scroll down and get to the JSX, we also have to create user options to once again populate that drop menu, just like when we create a new post, and it will have all the user's names in there. So we could change the author if we want to. And then this form is very much like the add new post form. One change here though, is we had to provide a default value for the user ID in the select. And that is because the post already has an author. So we want to show who was the author of the post, even if it's going to be changed. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as the add new post form. So that covers everything. There's quite a bit of code there though. So if I went too fast, make sure you download that source code. Now at the top of the file, we imported update post in, from the post slice, but we haven't created that yet. So let's jump back to the post slice and let's add that update CRUD operation. So we'll scroll up to where we've created these other async thunks that are above the slice. We've got fetch posts and add new post already. So we'll see what variation there is as this is slightly different than add new post when we update a post. I've pasted in the new async thunk for update post and we can see it's posts update post is the label and then what we're sending in, once again, control B, so it doesn't scroll off the screen, we're sending in that initial post data, which is what that is. And we're destructuring and getting the ID from that initial post because we need the ID in the URL as we send this update to the API. And we're now using the HTTP method put with Axios. The rest of this is structured very similar to what you saw before up here. And of course, we're sending along that post data because we're now putting the data to update the existing post that has whatever ID that we pass into this URL. And as we previously learned in the last lesson about async thunks, they're handled with extra reducers where it receives a builder object and that builder responds to different cases. So here we have the add case for fetch posts and it listens to pending, fulfilled, and rejected as far as the promise state. And then the add new post listen to fulfilled. And that's what we're going to do again with the update. So just underneath the previous case for add new post, here we're going to paste in our new case. And of course, when I save, we'll get some better formatting here as well. So saving, of course, adjusted that for us. Now let's look at this update post because it's slightly different we're getting some information back here with the action payload. But we could have a successful post, essentially a post that is not rejected as a promise, but it might not have the status 200. It might not have completed the update. Say the server sends a status code of 500, an error. And we'll discuss why this could happen, especially with our fake API in a moment, but let's first just consider the facts. So if the payload does not have the ID property and we're checking that with optional chaining here, the question mark and the dot, then we're just going to log that the update could not complete because what's really going to return is the error message from the catch block of Axios. So that action payload here, but it would still not be considered an error. It would be considered fulfilled because Axios still return that information. So what happens is we get our error message right here, and then we just return to end this. But if everything goes as planned, we can destructure the ID from the action payload. We can set a new date on the action payload, and then we can go ahead and filter out 
the previous post with the same ID, and then we can update our state with all the previous posts, and then of course pass in the new post. So let's go back to our edit post form and make sure we applied everything from update post correctly. We already had the import here. Now let's look and make sure we're dispatching it correctly as well. So when we have the dispatch, it's right here, and we're calling our async thunk update post, and we're passing in all of the information that we need right here. Again, the only property that is not being passed in is the date because we create a new one. With that confirmed, let's go back to our file tree and go back to our app.js so we can pull in our edit form and apply the proper routing as well. So after our single post page, we can say import edit post form and their Visual Studio Code helps us out. It's from features, posts, and then our edit post form component. And then this will once again be a child of our post route. And so after we have our single post page here, we can paste this in and look at the route for editing a post. So now we would go to post slash post slash edit and then the post ID and then we'll see our edit post form. Now let's drag Visual Studio Code to the left and I'll go ahead and drag our blog so it fills up the entire screen. It looks a little better this way. We can go ahead and add a few votes for coffee on the first post and make sure they carry over to the view post page and they do. Our state still stays updated and represents exactly what it should be. Now if we click edit post, we see the edit post form and here we've pulled in the post title and content. So we should see if we could go ahead and update this. Let's select all of the title and just say shorter title right here. And we'll leave the author as Leanne Graham. And now inside the content area, I'll select all of that and just say, hey there. And we'll go down to our post, press enter. And now we see the new post. So we're at the post page, not the edit post page. It has a shorter title, still has seven votes for coffee, and the update async thunk worked as expected. Now let's go back to the home page and we see the full list of posts. And once again, we see our new title and new content in the first post and we're on the home page. Let's go back to VS Code. I'll drag the app to the right. Let VS Code fill the screen. And we need to go back to the post slice because now we want to go ahead and create an async thunk that will allow us to delete a post as well. So now in the post slice, control B to hide that file tree. And instead of way down by the builders, let's go up where we've created our async thunks. And right after update post, I will press enter a couple of times to allow some room and paste in our delete post, which is also very similar, but let's look at the differences. So here we've labeled it post slash delete post. We're still receiving initial post data. We're still destructuring and getting that ID from that initial post data. And now we're going to go to axios.delete, so the HTTP method delete, and the URL looks just like it did for our update post. It needs the ID to know which post to delete. Now we see some things here that are almost unique to our fake REST API that we're using from JSON placeholder because even though we send the delete request, JSON placeholder doesn't send back the ID. Typically, a REST API would send back the ID of the post you just deleted, at least in my experience. But JSON placeholder doesn't do that. If anything, we just get an empty object. So what we're doing here is checking to see if the response status is 200. And if so, then we're just returning that same initial post data so we can grab the ID out of it inside of our builder case as we move down here in the post slice. But if it does not have a status of 200, then we're returning a message that has whatever status and status text there is. So that could at least be logged if we did not get the correct information that we expected that says our post is deleted and this is essentially passing that ID along. So now let's add our builder case to handle this delete post async thunk. So as we scroll down to the bottom of our add case list, I'll paste in this case 
and save. It looks like it's already formatted well. So we're looking for fulfilled again on the delete post. And here, this is much like what we had in the create post. So we're making sure we have that ID property here with optional chaining. We're checking for that on the payload. And if it does not exist for any reason, we're then saying the delete could not be completed, or it says delete could not complete, and we log whatever the action payload is, which could be that error message. It's whatever that status and status text would be. And then otherwise, we're destructuring, getting the ID, and then we're filtering out all of the other posts that are not equal to that ID. And then we're just setting the state to those posts because we've essentially deleted that post, and so we don't want it in the state any longer. And now let's go to the edit post form and allow a post to be deleted as well. Essentially, let's put that async thunk we just created into action. So besides the select post, by ID and update post from the post slice, we also need to import delete post. And now when we scroll down, we already have our on save post clicked. So this one will be very similar. We'll just come down here after the user's options and we'll put in on delete post clicked. And we can see we still set the status to depending, uh, pending, not depending. <laughs> and then we have dispatch and we're dispatching our delete post. All we need to pass in is the ID because that's all that's needed to send to the API to delete the post. And of course, it's all that's needed to remove it from our state as well. We still use unwrap here so we can use try catch logic. We still use navigate, but now after we delete a post, we just wanna navigate back to the home page. So we just navigate to the slash. And then as far as the rest of this goes, we just set the request status back to idle as we do with the on save post clicked. And we just log the error the same as we do with the on save post clicked as well. But now to call the delete into action, we need to add a separate button for that. So after our save post button, we'll just put the delete right here underneath paste that in and you can see it's just calling that on delete post clicked and we'll save. A very small thing that I just noticed, no big deal, but this was using backticks. So at some point it was a template literal and I just changed it. It doesn't need to have backticks when I'm not passing anything in. So I'll just use single quotes there instead of the backticks and save in our navigate. And while we're at it, considering this navigate, let's go to our file tree, go to the add post form and allow some navigation as well after we add that new post. So we're going to import use navigate from React Router DOM. And after we have that, we need to apply, well, we need to first define our navigate from use navigate. So let's post that, paste that in as well here, but I'll save, keep that on a separate line. So now we can define navigate and use it after our post is saved. And once again, after we create a new post, we just want to go back to the home page. So here, after we set all of the local state for the form, we'll just navigate back to the home page. So now we can try more of this out. Let's drag Visual Studio Code to the left, drag the app to full screen, and test everything out. We're here on the home page. Of course, it reloaded, and when it reloaded, we lost our state there. But we've got, say, four thumbs up, nine coffees. We can view the post. It goes ahead and keeps those reactions. We can edit the post again. And we'll say small title and then inside of here we'll just say hey and now we have our new post essentially our edited post that has a small title and says hey all of that looks good we go back to the home page that's good too so now let's go to the post page let's add a new post and we can say hey there and give another author and then we'll say small post number two, and then save. And now we've got a second post as well, so we can create. Notice after we saved that new post, we navigated right back to the home page. Now let's delete a post. So when we go to view post, then we can go to edit post. And if I scroll down, yep, we've got a delete post button now. So this is post from Leanne Graham that had small title and hey, if we delete the post, we have navigated back to the home page, and you can see her post was not this one. It said a small title, I believe. So it is gone, but we still have our hey there post. Now, here's something about new posts and working with the fake API. We really can't update them because it doesn't exist 
uh, on the fake API. So this would be like post 101 instead of the 100 posts from that API. So if we go to the edit and we want to say small post number 23 and then put you after this and then we save, it doesn't go ahead and update. Notice we don't have those changes. And that's because we got that message back from the API where it really wasn't a successful update. So let's quickly look at that and I'll show you a change you can make to make sure that your state is working fine as you want it to and ignore that response from the API. But you wouldn't want to leave it this way normally. So let's look at the post slice and we'll go to the update async thunk that we created. There is our update post. And instead of returning the error message here, which is what is happening, and then we're just exiting out of our builder case, what happens is we could return the initial post that once again has that same data that we were updating with. And that's what we expect the API to send back when it is successful. Of course, it sends a 500, a server uh, status 500 because it cannot update a post that doesn't exist at the API. We can interact with this fake API, but we can't really create the post there. So if we save this change, and I guess we should note only for testing Redux and save. So if we change this, then we should go ahead and get our state updated correctly. I'll move this back to the left and yeah, we've got post not found because we made some updates and changes now. So let's go back to home. Let's create a new post. So this would be post ID 101. We'll say, hey, and pretty much say the same thing here. Save post, there's our new post. Now we can view it. And after we view it, let's go to edit post and save post, hey there. Let's see if we can go ahead and update this with you and save. And now we've got, hey, there you. So it did update as we wanted it to. It does look like, like just like the end of the last lesson, there's somewhere that I have named the emojis incorrectly because we're not getting numbers next to all of those. Let's see if we can find that by pulling this back to the right and looking at Visual Studio Code. And in the post slice, I bet we have somewhere named those incorrectly because it should be uh, start with a thumbs up and end with a coffee every time. Let's make sure we're getting those accurate. And here is the problem. Our add new post fulfilled was not updated, at least in this code. So I'll save that. And that could have actually been in the source code from the starter code as well. So you wanna make sure you have all of those named accurately and then the names and, or at least the emojis and the numbers should show up correctly. I'll drag this back to the left. Once again, not found, but let's create a new post and make sure that goes ahead and updates as we wanted to. Hey, there, and yes, we've got everything accurate there. Save, let's say again, and updated. Yes, we still have all the numbers by the emojis, so that looks good as well. Now it's currently worth noting that if we go to the view post page and then we refresh, even though we're loading in data from the API, we get post not found, but we can go ahead and correct this behavior. So let's pull this to the right and go back to Visual Studio Code. And for Visual Studio Code, we're going to go to the index.js. And if you remember from a previous tutorial, we are loading the users immediately at the app load. Well, really, that's all we need to do as far as getting the posts from the API as well. So let's go ahead and import our fetch posts from the post slice as well. And then we can dispatch that fetch posts as just like we are fetch users. So we'll have posts there. And now we just need to make some changes in our post list. So in the file tree, I'll scroll to post lists. And here at the top, now we're not going to need some of the things that we were using. One of those things is use effect. So we can remove that. Another is the import of fetch posts because we'll no longer be using it here. And finally, use dispatch because we will no longer be dispatching fetch posts as well. So I could remove this empty line here. And now inside of our code, we can remove the definition of dispatch and we can remove use effect where fetch post is called. 
And after I do that, I'll go ahead and save. Okay, once again, dragging Visual Studio Code to the left and expanding the blog that we have. And now when we load the page, just like when I hit reload, we instantly have the posts. Now when I go to view post and I hit reload, we still have the post. So again, feel free to download the CSS that I have from the source code and tweak it and maybe fix a little thing or two that I have overlooked possibly. Otherwise, everything is very complete and we have all CRUD operations now inside of the post slice for our different blog posts. So if we scroll up and look at our async thunks, we have fetch posts, add new post, update post, and delete post. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.